Good morning. Welcome to virtual worship this morning. We are here with a skeleton crew. Um, Tim Woods and Belinda Weller are here to help with our music leadership. And Noel Martins is behind the camera. And we are grateful for this opportunity to be here this morning to share God's word and God's love with you. There is an order of worship that is posted on our Facebook page and attached with this worship service, I hope. <laughs> um, we're learning the technology as we go. Um, also, the order of worship has gone out in a special edition of The Reacher, which went out electronically on Saturday. And um, those of you who receive hard copies regularly of our newsletter will get that worship. So if you have an opportunity, you'll be able to follow along in the worship order. The session has taken action to um, continue with the suspended program here at the church. The office will be closed. Um, we will not gather together for worship, so we will gather online, however. And if you have been watching any of the social media and the impact that this COVID-19 has had on church culture, you will see the memes and the articles that talk about how the church is not closed, but the church has been deployed. And at this point, we have been deployed to our homes to stay away from each other in the best interest of our own health and the health of our community. So while we are deployed, we can still be the church through our prayers, our telephone calls, our gifts of, of mercy, maybe an errand for a neighbor who can't get out to the store who might have a compromised immune system or who just isn't feeling well, we can, we can still be the church together even though we are apart. I think those are all of the announcements that I have for you right now. I'm going to invite you to take a moment um, as Belinda helps us center ourselves for worship, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Will you join me in prayer? 
loving God, for this day as the sun has come up, shining in the sky, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, O oh God, that even in these moments of isolation and this season of distancing, we can still come before you and offer our prayers and praise and thanksgiving. For you are Lord of all, O oh God, and we seek to follow you, and to you alone we offer our worship. May your name be glorified. Amen. If you have your order of worship, please join as Tim and Belinda lead us in blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. join me in prayer. Loving God, as your word is read and proclaimed, open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, and open our hearts to receive that which you have for us today. For we pray in the name of Christ and all God's children say, Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. And when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. 
A windstorm arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Here ends the gospel blessing lesson. May God add God's blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. I invite you as we continue our Lenten discipline, if you, again, if you have the worship format in front of you, we will sing Psalm 42 using the Psalter for Christian Worship by Michael Morgan. You will recognize the familiar tune. Let us sing together. Take wives and have sons and daughters. 
Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I mentioned in the announcements that the church is not closed, but it has been deployed. I must tell you that I agree with the meme on social media that says, this is the lentiest Lent I've ever Lented. Now I will confess to you that I personally love the season of Lent. I love the introspection. I love the prayer. I love the time to reflect on who Jesus was and what he did and who he is now, and what he is doing and has done in my life. That's part of what makes the Easter joy of resurrection so meaningful, is knowing that every step I take, every emotion I experience, everything that happens to me has happened to Jesus before me. Everything that happens in your lives has happened to Jesus in his life. All of our emotions, all of our grief, all of our sorrow, all of our joy, all of our abundance, all of the scarcity, all of the loyalty and community and none of the community. Our experience in life has been one that Jesus shared himself. It is indeed part of what makes him so human for us. So I want to say a little bit to you and maybe to myself as we are in our isolation and our physical distancing and our exile from our community, our exile from our family and friends and loved ones, our exile from community activities.
God is still present. The experiences and the emotions that we have, God is present. God's faithfulness abides, and his love abounds, even in the midst of exile. Jeremiah writes these words from the Lord to Israel in exile in Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. I dare say I have friends that are building their raised garden beds. They have time to work in their yard and get their garden set for planting. I have no such interest. I have two very black thumbs. I will kill anything that grows. So I will do other things. I will start picking up the phone. I will call. I will send text messages. I will send emails. I will even go on camera and worship in an empty sanctuary so that we might be connected to each other in the midst of our exile. This is indeed the lentiest Lent I have ever Lented. So many things have been canceled. So many things are not happening. We have been limited state by state, community by community. Officials have said, stay at home. And in some places they have been so emphatic that they have passed legislation making it a crime to not stay at home. So many things are canceled. Church Online is not canceled. If you really want good worship, tune in with us every week. If you want lots of worship, talk to me. I know thousands of pastors and churches who are doing the same thing. And we could all of us preach on the same text and none of us have the same sermon. Worship online, turn on Pastor Salem. Church online is happening, so church and worship are not canceled. Quiet time with God is not canceled. If you're like me, you have been watching the newscast and the press conferences, and you are probably oversaturated with information and overwhelmed. I don't know what time of the week it was, but somewhere in the middle of the week, I muted the television and reveled in the silence. I've been cooking because the restaurants won't let me sit at their tables. <laughs> so I've gotten acquainted with my kitchen, and I find that when I am cleaning and cutting vegetables and standing at the stove, that my focus is directed on a different activity that allows time for God to creep in and to have a conversation. You might not be able to sit and pray with someone, but praying for someone has not been canceled. We can, each of us, spend time each day in prayer for the sick, for those who are becoming sick, for those who are recovering, for those who are dying. Yes, friends, dying. We pray for the well-being and the welfare of our friends and our family and our loved ones 
We pray for the welfare and safety and health of our community and our state and our nation. We pray for our leaders who at a time in our lives are in some of the most powerful and yet worst positions that leaders can find themselves in, making decisions for entire populations and knowing that they won't be able to please everyone. Prayer has not been canceled. And we have a lot of time to do it now, don't we? Checking on a friend. I got a text message from a friend in Texas the other day. She said, are you surviving? And I said, yep. How about you? And she said, yep. But Lowe's living room is kind of boring. So I'm going to patio backyard you. And I thought, well, that's fantastic. Check on your friends. Check on your family. Send them a little smiley face emoji as a text message. And if you don't know how to do that, ask someone who does. Because let me tell you, when my mom sends me a text message with a smiley face emoji, it makes me smile. We might not be able to gather together, but that doesn't stop us from being able to help others. Helping others is not canceled. Maybe you have a neighbor who has difficulty getting around, or because of health concerns, they shouldn't be out doing their own shopping. Would it take much to touch base and say, hey, I have to go to the grocery store, can I get anything for you? And then leave it on their doorstep in a grocery bag for them to pick up and put away. Helping others is not canceled. The church, though we cannot gather together, though our programs have been canceled, our buildings have been closed, now more than ever, being the church is not canceled. Being the church still looks like having worship together, experiencing what we can together, online, separated from one another. Being the church still looks like loving and serving one another in the ways that we are able, in the ways that maintain and respect the physical distancing, in the ways that maintain and respect dining establishments that have gone to strictly take out and drive through. Being the church means tipping your delivery driver maybe just a little extra. Being the church means loving your neighbor. I found this fantastic meme, and it goes back to Jeremiah's text. As Jeremiah writes to the Israelites, bloom where you are planted. And I want to tell you what the meme says, and then I'm going to hold it up because we never get to do this. Um, but I'm going to bring it right up to the camera so that you can see it. And it has a list of things that we cannot control, and in the center, the things that we can control. So in the things that we can control, and therefore we will focus on them, a positive attitude, following the CDC recommendations, practicing social, I say the word physical distancing, because it doesn't mean that I can't be social, it just means that we can't be face to face when we are together, so physical distancing. I'm in control of being kind and gracious. I'm in control of social media. I'm in control of the time to turn off the news. 
I am in control of finding fun things to do at home. When was the last time you picked up a coloring book? That's one of my spiritual disciplines that I'm going to launch this week. Now, things that we can't control. We can't control whether or not others practice the rules for physical and social distancing. We can't control what other people do. We cannot predict what will happen. We cannot know other people's motives. We cannot control the amount of toilet paper at the grocery store. We cannot control how long this will last. And we cannot control how others react. And Noel, if you'll help me so that I get it in focus here. This is what the graphic looks like. Okay. This is what it looks like. The things we can control and the things we cannot control. And yet, Jeremiah writes to the exiles in Babylon, bloom where you are planted, build houses, plant gardens, raise families, participate in the life of the community and look to its welfare. Friends, just because we can't be together does not mean that we cannot find ways to thrive and grow in these days, in this time of exile from one another, from those whom we love. May God add God's blessings to the preaching and the hearing of God's word. Amen.
I want to tell you a little bit about this robe. I found it several years ago at um, a preaching conference. And I was so taken with it because many of my colleagues had stoles made out of this material. And I love this panel that shows all God's children from around the world. And I'm wearing it today because just as this panel of faces from around the world is connected, each of us is connected to one another. And I would like for us to keep that in mind as we go to prayer. I also want to say something about our personal discipleship practices as pertains to our offerings to God. Obviously, we cannot pass the offering plate to receive gifts. Um, we encourage you to write a check and put it in the mail to the church. We are checking the mail regularly, so it won't sit in the mailbox. Um, but um, we do encourage you to support the church financially, as has been your habit and custom. Also, we want to be specifically in prayer for people who have been impacted financially. And so we understand that there will also be limits on the kind of support that would be coming into the church. But if you are able, we invite you to make your offering of yourself and your gifts to God. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Loving God, creator of all, of everything that is, everything that has been, and everything that is yet to be. We are not in control, O oh God, but we know you, and we know that you are in control. You have power to quiet the storms on a rough sea and to bring calm. We pray, O oh God, that you would bring us peace. We confess that in these days of exile and isolation and distancing and uncertainty and anxiety, we have been unfaithful, O oh God. We have not done the things that we ought to have done. We have failed to show and share your love. Stress has put us at a point of short temper, easy flare up. We confess, O oh God, that we have hurt one another. And in doing so, we have hurt you. We ask for your grace and your forgiveness, O oh God. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we would know your steadfast love and that our cups would overflow in a manner that we would share the light of your love with the world. We pray, O oh God, for your children in every part of the world. We pray for those who are in harm's way, working the front lines, whether in a military capacity or a medical capacity, a first responder, doctors, nurses, techs, aides, all of the folks that are working for the good and safety and welfare of others. Bring your blessing, O oh God. For those who are suffering from illness, be it COVID-19, be it cancer, be it autoimmune issues, be it the common cold, O oh God. We pray for your children and ask for healing and restored health according to your will. We pray for your wisdom to be with our leaders as they deliberate and make decisions and try to lead in these most anxious of times. Grant grace and good humor and forbearance, O oh God, in the coming days and weeks and months as we go forward through these days. 
We pray for your church, O oh God, that it would be a beacon of your light and love and hope for the world. Let us be the church in service to one another and in service to the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray with the boldness of children using these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to turn in your order of worship, and let us sing together, Abide With Me. This is where I would say to you, go out, but don't. Stay at home. Wash your hands. Call your friends. Call your loved ones. Check on them. Remind them that God loves them and that you love them too. Be the church. And be the church knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit are with us now 
and always. Amen. Thank you.